Living in an era where every entertainment company wants to get all our attention, always producing more films, more TV shows for their own platforms, so people never stop watching them. An era where the video game industry is always searching for bigger maps, more collectibles, more multiplayer content, more planets to visit. All open for you to explore. An era in which games are made exponentially longer by adding some uninteresting story plots, puzzles, combat sections. An era I am tired of. It's not like we need to play hundreds of hours on the game to enjoy it. For a while now, I've been choosing the next game I will play by the length of it. Time being limited, I was too scared to spend dozens of hours in a game that might disappoint me in the end. And so in those last months, I've played a lot of indie games I've been accumulating in my backlog, and I've been through amazing experiences. Until at some point, I felt like I was in need of a long and epic AAA adventure that would make me go through strong emotions such as sadness, anger, sadness, depression. So I chose to play Days Gone, and god, that was complicated. Like, the game is fine, I got involved in the story a lot, riding a bike in an apocalyptic open world fits great, and I had a lot of fun trying to beat the hordes of zombies, or more like run away from them, like this shit was too oppressive, it's crazy. <laughs> BUT IT IS SO LONG! Every moment you think the game is finally ending, it is not. It drives me crazy. Get it? It, uh, because I, okay, because I said it drives me like because in the game you so you there's a bike while killing my twentieth enemy outpost. I started asking myself, what is the longest game ever made? I mean, can you tell when is a video game finished? Rasputin made a video basically asking the question, is a video game finished after the credits roll? Spoiler, it depends. Some games will have a huge replayability because of some multiplayer elements, sandbox, creative modes, new game plus, new difficulties unlocked, NFTs, some others won't have any replayability because they are more story or discovery driven games. As soon as you've discovered everything, no more surprises, no more fun. It's kind of messy. So let's do some research! If we base this research on the replayability, there are two kinds of games that beat basically every other. Game as a service. Yeah, I mean they are done to be played as long as possible by as many people as possible over the years. I was almost not surprised when I saw some CSGO players with 35,000 hours on Steam. No, what surprised me was the review. And that he kept playing after putting up that review. Those games are constantly updated, with new content releasing it's pretty hard to define when you've completed the game, or if it is even possible to do so. The other kind is... Idle games! Woo! It's a genre of game in which you will be progressing whether you're playing or not. You can start the game, quit for 5 years, and it will still be running for you. Thing is... Idle games do not end, at least for most of them. And that because of a game mechanic that allows you to reset your save with an increased progression that will make you go further than you were previously. And that... To the end of space and time. For real, I'm sure idle games will survive humanity's great collapse. If you want to understand better where do idle games come from and why are they so popular, please go check Strixo and Moriarty's videos on the subject. So, to make it easier for research, let's just use games that have an actual ending and are 100% completable to live a full experience. When we search online for the longest video game ever made, one name comes back a lot. The Longing is a point-and-click released in 2020 in which you will play as Shade, a character living alone in a cave, waiting for its king to wake up. As you're waiting, you will be able to explore the cave every day a bit further, read some actual full books like Moby Dick, or pimp your room up full of drawings and fancy glowing crystals. Thing is, in the beginning of the game, the king tells you this.
Yeah, 400 days. Real days. On the paper, yeah, this is the longest game ever made. 9,600 hours to see the end of it. But there's something that's not quite satisfying me. You won't spend those 9,600 hours playing non-stop. The game is made so that when you stop playing it, time keeps passing. It is still active like an idle game. So you could completely not play for 400 days to see straight what happens at the end. Actually, the average time for a completionist is 59 hours, which is not even an entire binge watch of Lost. And that is even more disappointing. Okay, let's try something much more casual and popular. Think about one game. One game that traveled through console generations. One game that sold over 30 million units. One game that was proclaimed game of the decade and even best video game ever made. One game that gamers played hundreds, thousands of hours. It's Skyrim. And it takes approximately 232 hours to complete 100% without mods. Because no, we won't be counting mods. Now, when we talk about long experiences in video games, we often think of open worlds. And you know what license is famous for its gigantic amount of different beautiful landscape while living an epic action RPG adventure story? Animal Crossing is kind of a perfect life simulator where you can live your dream life without having to be stressed about anything. Except taxes, of course. If we are talking about a series simulating life, we can expect a pretty damn long lifetime for those games. Let's compare them real quick. Animal Crossing New Horizons, the latest entrancy in the saga, was released in 2020 on Switch and has an approximate length of 381 hours. Animal Crossing New Leaf came out in 2013 on 3DS and takes 453 hours to complete. It's only 100 hours more! But the final boss of this saga is the first Animal Crossing released in 2002 on GameCube with 611 hours of gameplay. But I think we can go further. The Monster Hunter franchise is long! <coughs> Sorry. There are open world RPG games in which you will hunt monsters. Wow, yeah, kaboom. I never played them. So we've got here the perfect combination to get the longest game ever made. Let's see if they beat Animal Crossing. The first entry in the saga Monster Hunter was released in 2004 on PS2 and takes 298 hours to complete. Monster Hunter World was released in 2018 basically everywhere and takes 402 hours. Still not Animal Crossing, but we are getting to it. Monster Hunter Freedom Unite came out in 2009 on PSP and is basically a remaster of Monster Hunter Freedom 2, who's a sequel of Monster Hunter Freedom, itself a new part of Monster Hunter G, an extension of the very first Monster Hunter that was released only in Japan. Got it? Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate came out in 2013 and goes up to 553 hours of game. We're almost there. Last but not least, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate comes out in 2018 and reaches 689 hours. It's 8.1 binge watching of Lost. <laughs> it's a fucking lot. So that's it. The longest game to beat ever is Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. It's funny because I was really expecting all oh, big AAA like that or some random unknown indie games. Wait, what's that? Parotrauma is a co-op survival horror game that takes place in a submarine in one of Jupiter's moons, Europa. The game is in early access on Steam since June 2019, and it is currently developed by Fake Fish and Undertow Games, the people who made SCP Containment Bridge. You play as the member of a crew having to accomplish some tasks in a submarine. It has a pretty technical gameplay that will ask you plenty of time to learn and understand the different mechanics depending on what job you choose, as it is being pretty accurate with the subject it's touching. Okay, it is still in development and has a big multiplayer side that makes the game popular, but I've asked the community and apparently it's the submarine editor and mods that keep the game so fresh and replayable. 5000 hours is huge. And what's even crazier about this is that 
nothing is true. This game doesn't take 5,000 hours to complete. It took 5,000 hours to one player until he potentially stopped playing it. When I started writing this video early 2022, this person was the only one having submitted his hours on the game. Since then, the amount of hours drastically lowered to 139. And that's the same for all the games I've mentioned. For this video, I've been using How Long To Beat, a pretty famous website that calculates the statistics from the player's experiences. But it does not matter because in the end, the time a game takes to finish depends on you, your experience, and how long you want to make it last. That's also why people play so many multiplayer games, sometimes for years and years, and I bet you might be one of them. Or why people create mods, fan arts, and fan fictions about those games. It's because we want them to live. You will probably want to come back to the games that impacted you the most. And when it comes to games like Return of the Obra Dinn or Outer Wilds, with a 0% replayability, well, you can always find your own reasons to go back to them. Like making a video about it, for example. Anyways, it didn't make sense to remove some categories to choose which is the longest game, because the same way your book is not finished after you turn the last page, some games will stick with you for a long time. They will be there in your daily thoughts, and even, or very few of them, in your heart.